The University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point Northern Aquaculture Demonstration Facility introduces the Walleye Video Manual, a series of instructional videos on intensive culture. Video 4, Early Life Stage Rearing, Collection and Qualification of Walleye Fry. As the walleye eggs begin to reach around 312 total temperature units, discussed in the previous video, they will start to hatch inside the bell jars. It is crucial to plan your hatch accordingly to be prepared for stocking fry into the larval system three to five days after hatch. The hatch walleye swim up towards the top of the bell jar. The bell jar screens are removed from the top of the jars to allow fry to flow out of the jar and into the trough. The trough is divided into three sections. Water flowing from the bell jars leaves the trough via piping that feeds into separate fry collection tanks, which are operating as a flow-through system in this setup. This trough design enables three different groups of fry to be kept separate. Fry are collected in a shallow 12-inch insert tank that rests inside a taller tank, which is 48 inches tall by 48 inches in diameter. These tanks are manufactured by Gemini Fiberglass Products. A light is clamped to the side of the tank to attract the newly hatched fry. Walleye fry are photopositive or attracted to light soon after hatch and several weeks thereafter. This is an innate behavior for locating zooplankton, the initial food source for the young fry. Zooplankton, such as Daphnia and copepods, are concentrated in sunlit waters feeding on phytoplankton. By utilizing this light source, we can concentrate the strongest swimming and healthiest fry for easy collection. Water drains from the insert tank through a fine micron center box screen. Because eggshells and other debris enter the tank with the fry, the screen allows for an increased surface area for water to drain out of the tank. Without enough surface area, a normal bottom screen would quickly clog and the tank would overflow. Aeration is also utilized to keep the screen clean of debris by running half-inch black rubber polydiffuser tubing around the bottom perimeter of the box screen. The diffuser tubing is purchased from Pentair Aquatic Ecosystems. It is important that the tubing is snug around the bottom of the box screen to ensure debris is not being collected underneath. UWSP NADF utilizes a rotary vane blower to supply air to this diffuser. Fry should be collected three to five days after hatching. Going beyond this time leads to starvation or cannibalism in the collection tank. Fry are collected with water near the light source to obtain the strongest and healthiest fry. Several containers of fry are collected and ready to be counted. Number of fry can be determined by either a mechanical method or a volumetric method. Be sure and have your method of counting ready or equipment calibrated before obtaining fry. One effective mechanical method for counting walleye fry is utilizing a gen sorter larval counter, model FCM. Although expensive to purchase, this counter can be rented through gen sorter company as needed for a lesser cost. This counter consists of a hopper, which has a collection basin that funnels water and fry down through a series of tubing. As the fry enter the tubing, they are individually counted utilizing infrared detection system. A bucket or container is placed under the tubing to collect the fry and water for transfer to the larval system. As fry are detected, the information is sent to a controller, which needs to be calibrated for the species and size of the fry. Here the count is retained until it is reset. This model can count as many as 1 million fry per hour. To begin calibration, place a bucket under the hoses and fill the basin with water from the bell jar head tank. Ensure water is running through all the hoses and they are detangled. Calibrate the controller by following the instructions in the gen sorter manual and set the controller to count. Once calibrated and reset, the fry can be poured into the basin to begin the count. A smaller hose can be used, which utilizes the incubation water to help direct fry down towards the tubing. 
Ensure that the controller is actively counting the fry. As each fry passes through the tubing, that tubing number will light up as a count. Another less exact way to estimate fry numbers is using the volumetric method. This is done by calculating a count of fry per volume of water. First, obtain a bucket of strong swimming fry and mix well to ensure even concentration of fry throughout the bucket. Fill up three small vials of a known volume with the mixed fry water. Pour the vials into three separate containers and count the number of fry per vial. Average these three numbers. We can then determine how many fry per volume of water from the estimated counts and apply to the total volume of water in the bucket. Here's a quick example. This process has to be repeated for each new bucket or volume of fry. Although this volumetric method is a cheap and easy process, it is time consuming and not very accurate. For production level and accuracy, we recommend the mechanical method and purchasing or renting a gen sorter larval counter. After the fry have been counted, they are ready to be stocked into the intensive system. We will discuss this system and design in the next video, the walleye larval system.